adding sound to the processing game is a fairly straightforward process. So first I just want to note that I have listed the sounds that were not created by me that I am putting in the license into the code for these as a comment. If this was a production game I would also include these in a credits page on the project itself so that anybody playing it can see it. The next thing that we need to do is import processing dot sound and then we bring in all of it. So we're following the same process as contained in the reference documents for the sound library. So we import the sound, we create an object to store a reference to that sound, we load that sound file and once it's loaded then at that point we can choose that sound to play. Key thing to remember as we do this is that we only need to load the sound once. Once it's loaded into memory then we can tell it to play, pause, stop, check if it's playing, etc. So we have a lot of possibilities occurring there. But And again those are all listed in the reference documents. But we only bring the sound in one time. So with that I want to create those sound references, my variables for it. So they will be of type sound and this is going to be my catch. Actually I want it to say caught good, caught bad, and then we're going to have four separate sounds. So I will have sounds for the different music that are going to play inside my project. And I have then my four music sounds that I'm going to work with for playing during my four states of the game. This would be my title music, my game music, win music, lose music. So now I have references for each of those and we need to load them into the project. So I'm going to put it up at the top here so I can see my variable names as I do this. So cut good is going to be equal to and we can look here and see how we do it. So it's equal to a new sound file. This which references the context of where we're loading it and then the name with the URL for the file. So we'll be equal to a new sound file, this comma, then in quotes, and it is going to be contained in my data folder, in my sounds folder, and then this sound is going to be shoot.mp3. So I'm recycling the sound file from a previous project. This it has that name. So that's why the name doesn't necessarily correspond to what I'm doing here. It's a 8-bit uh, MIDI generated sound that I created. I have a variety of sounds for jumping, shooting, hitting, crashing etc. So cut bad will be a new sound file. This dot comma quote data sounds and this one will be dad dot mp3. So now whoop, spelled this wrong. Should be this comma not this k so I mistyped since comma and k are right next to each other on the keyboard. All right, so before we put the music in and get that going, we're gonna just start out with these short sounds. So once we have these short sounds in our project, we need to figure out where and how we want them to play. Because then we can just tell that particular sound to play. And most of the time it's probably going to be good if we have 
catch two drops right on top of each other. We may want to determine if the sound is playing before we tell it to play again, uh, similar to what we saw in the previous uh, tutorial on dealing with sound and processing. So if I look through my game here and see under my drop management, we can see that we have two places that we could really deal with this. So we can find out, you know, or decide here if we're catching med kits, then we can win the game. Um, and if the caught COVID is supposed to be there. Um, there we go. And here we caught COVID, so then it changes her game state to lose. So we could put it here. We could also look inside the drop class, and we could see where when a drop is caught, we could tell it to play a type of sound. So we could even store a reference to the type of sound when we create the drop. So then when we create a new drop as part of our game, if it's med kit, it's going to have one kind of sound. If it's COVID, it's going to have another. So we can see that based on the type, we could also store which sound we want it to play so that when a drop is caught, it then plays that particular sound. So we could do that. And in a more complex game, we may wish to have the sounds attached to the objects themselves so we don't have to work as hard to keep track of where we want to do it. In this case where we're only catching a few objects and it's pretty straightforward and simple, then what we can do is caught good dot play like that. And here when we catch the COVID caught bad dot play so now if we load our project got the COVID and it ended so we can see how it's playing different sounds And if I could get two med kits right on top of each other, I may want to check to see if it's playing like what we saw in the previous example. Now, uh, the frequency of med kits, since I have um, so many uh, COVIDs coming down versus med kits, it would be near impossible to make that happen, but we certainly could put that in if you end up with the sound playing on top of itself. So it becomes an issue. Go back and review the previous tutorial to see how you will check to see if that sound is playing and if it is, it, or check to see if the sound is not playing and then only then do you want to play the sound. That way it will prevent it from playing on top of itself. So that's one way that you can set that up. Now the next thing that we want to look at doing now that we have started this process is work on getting our music to play. So the first thing we have to do before we can play the music is we have to create a reference to those items. So my title music is going to be a new sound file, this comma, quote, data slash sounds slash and the sound that I'm going to use will be we'll start.mp3 quote. So that's my Desert of Lost Souls. Two, three, four. So now we have title music, game music, win music, lose music. Now we get to change these. BitQuest is my game music and my win music is going to be PS win and my lose music is SP lose. So these are all sound files that I have acquired from Incompetech uh, filmmusic.io and then 
you can uh, look through those and find whatever works for you as you deal with it. Now we are going to be taking a little bit of a hit now when we try and load our project because when the project loads we have to wait while it processes and pulls into memory those different sounds so we can see where it's a much slower proposition at this point. So especially with four separate music files it is going to slow this down. Uh, one thing that's nice when we switch from processing into JavaScript is we can deal with the loading of assets a little bit better so that as a page or our program loads we can be loading things. We could load the title music and the game music without the win and lose and load those once the game starts. We have a number of ways we can spread it out. Uh, and JavaScript because it does do asynchronous uh, loading it can be loading all those assets uh, simultaneously and now no music is going to play yet because I didn't set up any music to play so this is where we need to figure out how and where to tell the music to play and there's a lot of different ways like every other programming problem that we can solve this so it's not that there's just one way or a way, but there's lots of ways. So we can set it up so that uh, we can put it into the game state where we can tell it what music we want it to start playing. We could put that into um, game. So we have a number or game title. Uh, win and lose. So we can put it into each one of those um, methods that define each state. So that's a way that we can go about it. We can build a controller that manages it. So there's a lot of different ways. But the key thing we want to be thinking about is when we start music, because I want to transition to a different piece when I change state, I will want to make sure that um, taking care of the current music that's playing before I start playing the next music, otherwise it gets kind of messy. So with that, we might as well give it a go. So I am at the end. This is the end of setup. So at the end of setup, title music dot play. And what I want, now if we move into title method here is when I switch to game tell the game music top that we can't oh game music dot play so now let's have a go here and see how this is working so we do have to wait for a little bit for things to load Sound has loaded. We can hear the Desert of Lost Souls playing. I'm in my title scene. And now I can still hear it playing. And we have BitQuest playing in the background, so that's problematic. So if we're going to switch our music, at this point I want to tell my title music to stop when I tell my game music to play. So we're probably going to want to do a similar thing if we go back into our game thinking about here. So if we're going to go to win, we can tell our game music to stop and tell win music to play. And if before we switch all the way over, then we can also, at this point, tell our game music to stop and tell our lose music to play. Third time's the charm. And forgot my ass there. So now, each time we're changing state, when title changes state, it stops, starts, and now um, 
Now we see that uh, win and lose when we go back to the game aren't so then that would be problematic because we would have those musics playing so right here we would have our win music dot stop and game music dot play and repeat that same one here but with lose music dot stop and game music dot play so if we run this, oh, what did we forget? Oh, I did a colon, not a semicolon. Let's try that again. There we go. Let's run it. And oh, and I can't win this game, so I'm going to cancel this real quick because there's no way I will get 300 or even 30. So we'll just go. We have to get three to win the game. We know we can lose pretty quick. But let's try and win the game, and we'll just say I just have to get uh, three or even two. Tato Music has loaded. Now we can see it's switched. Oh, I lost. Got our loser music. One. Alright, so we got got something going on here with it. So we do seem to have it somewhat working. It seemed like the reset was a little bit off. Which, if we wanted to repeat fewer lines of code, looking at the reset, going into win and lose, we could switch this game music play and put that into the reset with it. But let's try and figure out a little bit more about what is going on and why it was being... I'm just going to make it, if I catch one, I win if I... Of the med kits, if I catch one COVID, I lose. Oh, yeah. So that that's catching the COVID. Then we have the musics, musics. In the game title, play. Seems that I'm not quite sure what the previous glitch was, but it's behaving now. So even if we said we catch two or three, let me go back to three. Let's see if there was indeed something. Title scene, play. So now we won. Lost. So it does seem there's just a weird glitch because now it is behaving. So to recap, in credit our music, create our references, make sure to import the sound library so it can work, load our sound files so we have access to them, and then we can tell the sound to play when we need it to play, and we can tell the sound to stop when we need it to stop. As long as you put it in the right place in your code, it's going to work.